Hello, and thanks for joining us on this week's edition of the Appalachian Update, your weekly rundown of what's going on around campus provided by your student-run newspaper, The Appalachian. My name is Laird Davis. And I'm Natalie Broom. In news, SGA passed a new bill on September 26 called the Alternative Voting Authorization Act. This will allow senators to vote through electronic voting devices called iClickers, which will make for more efficient and accurate voting procedures. A marker commemorating the unmarked graves of African-American residents in Boone was unveiled Sunday to a crowd of around 100 people in the Boone Cemetery. This was an effort to preserve the long history of Boone's traditionally black Genaluska community. The marker contains the names of 65 individuals who were buried in the cemetery based on courthouse records. On August 27th, the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services set forth new standards for prescribing opioids. To help the wellness of students, Wellness and Prevention Services now use standards set forth by the state and by the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders to diagnose whether or not a student has a substance use disorder. The first confirmed case of the flu occurred the, the week of September 17th. If you're worried about getting sick this fall semester, you can now go to the clinic on campus to receive the flu vaccine. There are also other flu clinics around the Boone area. And now for your arts and entertainment stories. On September 26, the Chinese Culture Club celebrated the annual Mid-Autumn Festival. Founded in Chinese myth, the festival now celebrates the harvest, the full moon, and the gathering of family. The Chinese Culture Club offered performances from a cappella groups, Blue Ridge Kung Fu Academy, and readings from ancient Chinese stories and poetry. On September 27th, International Appalachian kicked off the first global exchange of the semester. The event, which celebrates international culture, seeks to educate people on App State's campus. Each event features an in, uh, international student who teaches a little about their culture through food and dance. These events take place on the last Wednesday of every month at 4 p.m. Charlie Pilkington and Stephen Pennell, former Appalachian State students, have been the owners of a large school bus used solely for Appalachian tailgating since 2010. The fans got an old school bus, decorated it with Appalachian logos and paraphernalia, and loaded it up with TVs, surround sound, and everything else they thought they might need. Keep an eye out this weekend for the Gold Squad bus during homecoming tailgating. From September 28th to October 1st, the First Year Showcase was held in the IG Greer Studio Theater for all First Year Theater and Dance students. There was a packed house nearly every night for their display of student-ridden and performed pieces. The showcase displayed different types of situations First Year College students may find themselves in. Some of the dancers in the First Year Showcase will also be featured in the Fall Dance Ensemble, showing November 15th to 19th in Valborg Theater. Now we'll send it over to Jamie Patel for our sports stories. Upstate Golf's Trip Summerlin was named Sunbelt Men's Golfer of the Week. Summerlin is the first men's golfer to be named Sunbelt Player of the Week since joining the conference in 2014. Upstate men's and women's basketball were back in full swing this week as they began practice on Monday. The women's side bring in eight new players with five returners to the team. The men will have ten players returning from last season, one new transfer and freshmen arriving. Both teams will be on display at Mountaineer Madness on October 20th. Mountaineer football is back this weekend after a bye week. App State will host New Mexico State on Saturday at 3.30pm for their annual homecoming game. The Mountaineers currently have a 100% record in conference play and defeated the Aggies 37-7 last season. The men's and women's cross-country teams both finished second at the Upstate Invitational last weekend. The women were led by junior Phyllis Greeley and senior Emily Fedders, while the men were led by senior Evan Georges and junior Colin Loy. Last weekend, App State men's soccer drew 0-0 with High Point University at Ted Mackerel Soccer Complex after extra time. The Mountaineers are looking to return to winning ways on Saturday, October 7th as they travel to Washington DC to take on the Howard Bisons in their first conference match of the season. That's all we have for you this week. For more news and to read full stories, visit us online at theappalachianonline.com or pick up our newspaper every Thursday. Until next time, I'm Laird Davis. I'm Natalie Broom. And I'm Jamie Patel. We'll see you next week.